The Equitable Life Assurance Society presents... This is your FBI. This is your FBI. The official broadcast from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Presented transcribed as a public service by the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community. Attention all homeowners. Please have pencil and paper handy to make notes. In about 13 minutes, the Equitable Society will give full information on its assured home ownership plan. This equitable plan is a money saver, a worry saver, a home saver. One of the finest services ever offered by the Equitable Life Assurance Society. So be ready with a pencil, for you'll surely want to jot down the address for getting further information on the Equitable Assured Home Ownership Plan. Tonight's FBI file, The Unhappy Medium. There's no telling how much money is mulcted from the general public throughout the year, but it is safe to say that the figure is well over a million dollars a week. That is a stunning fact, and as if to make the situation worse, it is an accompanying fact that for the most part, the victims chosen by the swindlers are those who can least afford the loss. They prey on the old, the weak, the confused. And they ransack as completely as any set of victorious Nazis looted the shops and homes of conquered countries. There is no geographical center for swindlers, because they are, by reason of their business, nomadic people. They wander, they stop, they swindle, and then they wander again. Their base of operations is in their unusually facile minds. And their swindles range from the ludicrous to the brilliant... But whatever their plan of attack might be, they always have a common cause to get your money. Tonight's file opens in the large living room of a house located in a western city. A stern-faced woman sits on one of the many wooden camp stools scattered around the room. The door opens, and her husband enters. Where have you been? Working. With a racing form in your pocket? I just bought it on the way home. Did you put that ad in the papers? Sure, it's on the streets already. What'd you say in it? Yeah, got a copy of it right here. Yeah, let me see it. Sure. Lays out nice, huh? Uh, Madame Roberto, reader and advisor. Are you in trouble or doubt, worried about business, love, health, or family affairs, or anything pertaining to the welfare of your life? How do you like that pertaining no to? No matter it? what Class, your huh? problems may be, I can help you. Call and consult me for reliable advice. Well, does that say it? It's not bad. Where is, uh, Madame Roberto? I'm in here trying on the new costume. Oh. Hey, Elsie, do you want to fix the top hook? I can't reach it. And turn around. <sighs> How's it look? Very good. Let's put the turban on, see how the whole thing looks. Oh, wait a minute. Don't put that turban on yet. The earphone's gone underneath. Oh, yeah. Al, would you move the crystal ball closer to the closet? The other night the wire was so tight I couldn't turn my head. I wouldn't mention the other night if I were you. Elsie, it wasn't my fault if the earphones went out of order and I couldn't hear you. Besides, why didn't Al cue me when the phones went out? How did I know they weren't working? She's got the mic in that closet and you've got the phones on your head. I can't hear anybody but myself. That must be pretty dull. Very funny. Elsie, when are we going to leave this town? Leave? Well, we just barely got here. You've been promising me we'd go to Hollywood. Oh, stop with that Hollywood all the time. But what about my career? How am I ever going to get to be a star if I don't get to Hollywood? Look, Peggy, we can't quit here. I got 12 prospects lined up. Maybe we get some new ones from this ad. You got anything on the prospects? Yeah. Here's all the dope I could get on them. Hey, do I have to remember all of that? No, Elsie will have it in the closet. You just listen. Come on, we better start rehearsing this stuff. Well, when are they coming? Post time is 8.30 tonight. It'll be a semi-private meeting like the last one. Now put on those earphones. Let's get to work. Now, Madam Roberto, I have here on these sheets of paper the questions that are most bothersome to these people. Tear them up, please, and throw them away. Yes, madam. Yes. 
Now, through the power she alone possesses, Madame Roberta will peer into the mysterious crystal ball and answer your questions. I am studying, but it is difficult. Keep talking, kid. I hear voices, but they are far away. Some of you people are not holding hands in a chain the way the madam instructed you. I'm going over the questions. Ah, they're all stiff so far. I must have help from you if you want me to answer your problem. Here's a good one. Mrs. H.L. I see some letters forming. They are spelling out Mrs. H.L. That's me. Has the madam any message for Mrs. H.L.? Have her stay after the meeting. I have a message for Mrs. H.L. Will Mrs. H.L. please come up to the front of the room? Oh, yes, surely. Mm-hmm. She's ready to be taken. Hook her good. I am Mrs. H.L. What is your message, Madam Roberto? I... I cannot reveal it here. It is too personal. Oh. Please remain after the others have gone. Oh, thank you, madam. Bless you. And now, ladies and gentlemen, take the hand of the person seated next to you and form the chain again. Madam Roberto, do you have any further messages? Peggy, brush the rest of them off fast. Let's get to work on the sucker. Meanwhile, in that same city... At the local FBI field office, Special Agent Jim Taylor is walking over to the desk of Agent Stan Kimball. Hello, Stan. Hi, Jim. When did you get into town? About 15 minutes ago. Well, I didn't know you were being transferred out here. Oh, I haven't been. I've been chasing and just missing three swindlers for a couple of months now. Every time I close in on them, I find they've just left town. (laughs) I know the feeling. But don't look so discouraged. You'll catch up to them. We'll catch up to them, you mean. Huh? Yeah, your agent in charge just assigned you to work with me. Well... How about filling me in on the background? Okay. Well, this little trio was wanted in five states for larceny, conspiracy to defraud, illegal fortune-telling, and unlawful flight to avoid prosecution. One of them, an Al Watson, he's done time twice. What for? Swindling both times. His wife, Elsie, she was acquitted each time for lack of evidence. Uh Uh-huh. Now, in this new setup they've been using in the last few months, they have a young blonde girl working with them. She uses the name of Peggy Garvey. Ah. You think they're here, eh? I'm pretty sure they are. The ticket seller at the station in Albuquerque remembered selling them three tickets from there to here. Well, one trouble with trying to find a fortune teller here is that there are a couple of hundred of them spread over the city. Well, we've got pretty good descriptions on them. Stan, let's get an alarm. Maybe the local police can help us tack them down. Where have you been? Oh, doing some checking up. Well, you've been gone long enough. A thing like this takes time. I found out what I wanted, though. This Mrs. Lincoln has a hefty gob of dough. Good. Let's get back to work, then. We can't keep the old slob waiting too long. Peggy. Yeah? Look, I want you to play this like you're already in Hollywood. And this is your screen test. I will. Now, do you remember everything I told you? I think so. All you gotta do is remember. It's like Hollywood. Okay. I'll be in the next room. Al, you go get Mrs. Lincoln. I'll see you later. Okay, Peggy. All right. Mrs. Lincoln? Yes? Come right this way. Madam Roberta will see you now. Oh, thank you. I'm sorry to have made you wait this long, but Madam Roberta has been concentrating. I understand. Madam Roberta, do you have any message for this troubled person? I am listening to the voices in the air. Queen of the occult, what do those voices tell you? They say that this troubled person has suffered some terrible misfortunes. Oh, that's true, so true. They tell me that there is someone who wishes you great evil. Yes, yes, I know who that is. They say this person person who wishes you great evil has put a hex on you and your possessions. I knew it. Madam Roberto, is there any way in which this troubled one can be delivered from the curse of her hex? I am listening. The voices say that if you will bring all your possessions to me, I will be able to deliver you from the hex. Oh, thank you. Thank you. But this must be done within the single turning of the earth. 
The madam means that if the hex is to be taken off, it must be done by tomorrow at the latest. Yes, I see. The voices say you are to bring to me all of your cash because that, too, is hex. Oh, I will. I have spoken. Mrs. Lincoln, you can go home and sleep tight. By tomorrow night this time, you'll have no more money trouble. Stan, I ran into a little luck. Oh? The Adams Costume Company here in town sold one of our little trio, a robe and a turban, but the trail ends there. Didn't they get any address at all? No, Mrs. Watson, or whatever name they're using now, came in, picked the stuff up. No alterations, no deposits, no nothing. Oh, I hope this isn't another close, but no cigar deal. Well, that isn't all. The police located the taxi diver at the railroad station who picked them up the night they arrived here. Where did he take them? To the Central Hotel, but they're not there anymore. Well, they couldn't work the swindle out of a hotel room. No, my guess is they found a house and rented it. That's always been there, pattern. Jim, let's call on all the fortune tellers alphabetically. Well, I wish we didn't have to take that much time, but I guess that's about the only thing to do. Okay, let's get that list we made up and start calling. <laughs> I'm right here. Oh. Well, what's been happening? The Lincoln Dame came here about an hour ago. She had all the stuff with her. The cash, too? Yeah, $7,000 worth of it. Hey. Has she been in there with Peggy for a whole hour? Yeah. What's going on? I don't know. I've been waiting for them to break it up. Stick your head in and give Peggy the sign. I don't want to disturb the deal. Look, she don't know enough to ad-lib this long. Look, but honey... Do as I say, Al. Stick your head in there. Okay. Mrs. Lincoln... Please. Where is Madame Roberto? She went out that other door. She told me to meditate. She said I must have absolute quiet. Oh, sure. You go ahead, Mrs. Lincoln. Keep meditating. Peggy isn't there. What? She left Mrs. Lincoln, went out the back door. She must have gone to her room. Come on, let's check on that. She, uh, she should have stayed with a customer. There's something funny about this. What do you mean? Oh, why should she leave the old dame? Well, maybe she ran out of words. Well, let's find out. There's no one in here. Are you sure? Well, do you think I'm blind? Hey, look. What? Wait. Here's a note on the bed. Let's see it. Wait, I'll read it. You read it now. You can read it. Well, well, what does it say? What does it say? She took Mrs. Lincoln 7,000 and went to Hollywood. <laughs> return in just a moment to tonight's file which shows how your FBI protects American citizens and American homes. Now a word about another type of home protection. Protection to make sure a moving man will never come to your home and say, gee lady, seems like only yesterday we moved you and Mr. Wilson into this swell little house and now I gotta move you out. Pretty tough on you. First you lose a good husband and now you lose your home. Of course it's tough. Nothing tougher. And that's why the Equitable Life Assurance Society created its assured home ownership plan. This money-saving, home-saving plan combines a low-cost first mortgage with life insurance to give you twofold protection against the two greatest dangers in home mortgages. The first danger is the death of the breadwinner. In the assured home ownership plan, the Equitable Society cancels the mortgage if the owner dies. It's paid off in full. What's more, every dollar previously paid under the plan to reduce the principal is returned to the widow along with the canceled mortgage. The second hazard in home mortgages is hard times. The Equitable Society's Assured Home Ownership Plan protects against that, too. During the owner's lifetime, a special cash fund is built up in this plan. It's always ready for use if sickness or unemployment threaten home security. As the mortgage shrinks, this cash fund increases. For example, it can be used to pay off a 20-year mortgage in approximately 15 years. Last but not least, the mortgage interest is only 4%, and there's a liberal allowance to cover title search, lawyer's fees, and other closing costs. So all in all, a man is very fortunate if his health, age, income, his home, and its location qualify him for an equitable assured home ownership plan. The way to find out if you qualify is to get in touch with your Equitable Society representative. 
Look in the phone book or write care of this station to the Equitable Society. That's E-Q-U-I-T-A-B-L-E. The Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. Now back to tonight's file, The Unhappy Medium. It is an axiom among those who do not know the habits or characteristics of criminals that there is honor among thieves. As illustrated by tonight's case from the files of your FBI, nothing could be further from the truth. Thieves, and especially swindlers, recognize no such thing as honor, because to recognize it would be to admit that there is such a thing as a code of ethics, as a set of rules by which human beings were better able to live with each other. The swindler cannot allow himself the luxury of a conscience. And without that, there is no such thing as honor. Any thief would willingly and anxiously steal, lie, cheat, or even murder, no matter who it hurt, so long as he gained from the criminal act. And that is as true of female thieves as it is of men. For the motto of criminals of both sexes is the same. That motto is, he who steals and runs away lives to steal another day. Tonight's file continues as the two FBI special agents get out of their car in front of the swindler's house. This is the place, all right, Stan. Look, they even have a sign on the front lawn. Well, all this occult hokum is perfectly legal in this town. Hope they're still here. Oh, they probably will be. I don't think they suspect we're this close to them. You never know about this trio. They make the score quick and then move on. Hey, look. Front door's open. Yeah. Have you got the warrant? Yeah. Come on, let's walk in. Well, if they're here, they're being pretty quiet. So come on, we better look around. Let's try this room first. Okay. okay. Hold it. Someone's sitting in the chair by the window. Pardon me. Oh, please be quiet. I'm meditating. Oh, I, I see. We're, we're special agents of the FBI. Here are my credentials. What do you want here? Have you seen a man and a woman about 45 and a young blonde girl about 21 or 2? Oh, you mean Professor Williams and Madame Roberto? I think so, yes. Uh, where are they, please? Well, Madame Roberto is in her room. She's concentrating. On what? On removing some evil spirits from my money. Ma'am, I think we'd better start at the beginning and get your whole story. Al, where have you been? I just went back to talk to the hostess. Hmm. You even table hop on planes. I wanted to find out when we get to Hollywood. Sit down. When we get there, you'll know it. Well, there's one good thing about all this. What? Once we get to Hollywood, we shouldn't have too much trouble finding her. How do you figure that? Well, she'll look for a job. Acting. We can nail her that way. (laughs) If you hadn't encouraged that acting, we wouldn't be trying to nail her at all. Are you going to start that again? Well, you're the one who told her she had talent. (laughs) You had her right away to that acting school. That fixed everything. I did it because we needed her. To run off with 7,000? Elsie, we'll get the dough back. I'll get it back. And I'm keeping it. From now on, I'm treasurer. Well, don't I get nothing? <laughs> yeah. You meditate. Mrs. Lincoln, when did you first hear of this Madame Roberto? There was an ad in the newspaper. I see. What, uh, what did this ad say? It said that Madame Roberto would help people to solve their problems. Mm-hmm. And you answered it? That's right. Mm. Why are you asking me all of these questions? Because I'm afraid you've been the victim of a group of swindlers. What? Yes, Jim, there's yeah. nobody else in the house. I've looked through every room. You find anything that might give us a lead? I didn't look for any clues to tell the truth. I just went from room to room to see if there was anybody around. Oh, I'm sure that you'll find you're mistaken, sir. About there being swindlers, I mean. Oh, Mrs. Lincoln, are those papers in front of you uh, yours? Why, yes. This is the deed to my house. And these are stock certificates I own. And these are my war bonds. Why did you bring them here? Madame Roberta was freeing them from evil spirits. Uh, Is that all you brought? No. 
No, I brought $7,000 in cash, which Madame Roberto was removing the hex from also. <clears throat> uh, how long ago did she start doing that, Mrs. Lincoln? Why, well, she left here about an hour ago to take the money back to her room. She said she could work better there. And uh, she left you here to uh, meditate? That's right. Mrs. Lincoln, it looks like you've been swindled out of your money. Oh, no. We'll try to get it back for you. Stan, I think the first thing to do is start searching this place. See if we can find any lead on where they've gone. Elsie! Well, where have you been now? Down in the lobby. What were you doing down there? Did you think Peggy was going to come over and meet you? We'll find her. We'd better. If we don't, this hotel don't get paid. Look, I know just what to do. This doll wants to be an actress, right? Right. Okay, then. She's got to sign with this central casting place or with an agent if she wants a job. Mm Mm-hmm. And if she's not there, we'll check on some of those hotels for actresses. She'd be likely to live in one of them places. Oh, why don't you get on the phone and call up? I did. Any luck? No, but I don't think she'd be stupid enough to use her own name. Yeah, that's true. Well, what are you going to do, then? Go to every place in person? We'll have to. We'll make up a list of places to check. We'll each take half. Come on. She must have had her bags packed by the time Mrs. Lincoln arrived. Sure looks that way. What's this? Hey, here's a note that was on the floor. Hmm? What's it say? Dear Elsie and Al, I'm sorry to do this to both of you, but I have taken Mrs. Lincoln's money for myself. I know you will both be mad, but my career comes first. I'm off to Hollywood. (laughs) Sounds like a double cross. Yeah. This can only mean one thing. If she's going to Hollywood for a career stand, she must want to be an actress. Yeah. Look, the wastebasket's pretty full. Let's see if we can find anything else in here, huh? Uh, just dump it down the bed. Oh, that's right. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Looks like correspondence of some sort here, Jim. Huh? Yeah, just circulars, though. Here's a batch of envelopes. Wait a minute. These are addressed to the girl. Peggy Garvey? Yeah. Stan, look at these addresses. Albuquerque comes first. I'm off to Hollywood. <laughs> Sounds like a double cross. Yeah. This can only mean one thing. If she's going to Hollywood for a career stand, she must want to be an actress. Yeah. Look, the wastebasket's pretty full. Let's see if we can find anything else in here, huh? Uh, just dump it down the bed. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Looks like correspondence of some sort here, Jim. Huh? Yeah, just circulars, though. Here's a batch of... She must have had her bags packed by the time Mrs. Lincoln arrived. Sure looks that way. What's this? Hey, here's a note that was on the floor. Hmm? What's it say? Dear Elsie and Al, I'm sorry to do this to both of you, but I have taken Mrs. Lincoln's money for myself. I know you will both be mad, but my career comes first. I'm off to Hollywood. (laughs) Sounds like a double cross. Yeah. This can only mean one thing. If she's going to Hollywood for a career stand, she must want to be an actress. Yeah. Look, the wastebasket's pretty full. Let's see if we can find anything else in here, huh? Uh, just dump it down the bed. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Looks like correspondence of some sort here, Jim. Huh? Yeah, just circulars, though. Hey, here's a note that was on the floor. Hmm? What's it say? Dear Elsie and Al, I'm sorry to do this to both of you, but I have taken Mrs. Lincoln's money for myself. I know you will both be mad, but my career comes first. I'm off to Hollywood. (laughs) Sounds like a double cross. Yeah. This can only mean one thing. If she's going to Hollywood for a career stand, she must want to be an actress. Yeah. Look, the wastebasket's pretty full. Let's see if we can find anything else in here, huh? Uh, Just dump it down the bed. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Oh. (laughs) Looks like... Correspondence of some sort here, Jim. Just circulars, though. Here's a batch of envelopes. Wait a minute. These are addressed to the girl. Peggy Garvey? Yeah. Stan, look at these addresses. Albuquerque, Denver, Kansas City. Hey, these are all the places they've been before. Places where I've just missed them. Uh, Anything in the envelopes? Um, no. No, but they're all from the same outfit, the... International School of Dramatic Art. There's one, two, seven envelopes. Let's look in the other rooms, Jim. Maybe we can find a better lead there. Oh, uh, wait, Stan. I don't know if we need a better lead. Let's find a phone. I've got an idea. Hello? 
Elsie! Well, where have you been this time? I'm sorry, honey. I thought you said meet you on the other corner. I said in front of the drugstore. Well, come on. <sighs> you told me it never rains in California. You want me to put in a fix with the weather? I want you to take me to Peggy. Where'd you find her? Where does she live? Right in that apartment house. Mm, I didn't even have enough money to buy an umbrella. You'll have enough in a couple of minutes. Look, are you taking bows? It took you two weeks to find her. This is a big place, you know. Yeah, this is the joint. Go ahead. You know what apartment she lives in? Yeah, right here on the ground floor, 117. Down this way. 11, 13. Here it is, 117. Out of the way, you little crook. Elsie! Out of the way. Didn't think we'd find you, huh? Al, we what? didn't come here for conversation. We want our money. Come on, Peggy, get it up. I don't know to what you are referring. Huh? I said, I don't know to what you are referring. Look, whatever you're eating, swallow it. We can't understand you. That's diction. Diction? We don't care what you call it. Just come up with that 7,000. I don't know what the you... The 7,000 you took from old lady Lincoln. Now, where is it? I'm using it. I need it for my career. Al, case those dresser drawers. Okay. Get away from them drawers. <laughs> Let's shift the diction out of her. Hey, look, keep away from there. That's my money, and hey, I... here it is. Right on top. Look, looks like most of it's here, too. Hey, don't you touch that money. Don't bother counting it. We'll do that back at the hotel. Let's get out of here. Okay. Hey, wait, you can't leave me with any... Step back inside. Uh, Come on, both of you. Who are you, mister? I'm a special agent of the FBI. I've got warrants here for the arrest of all three of you. You've got nothing on us. My guess is we've got enough for you to serve long terms in a federal penitentiary. Well, honey, <laughs> now you'll know where I've been. Al Watson and his wife, Elsie, were tried, convicted, and sentenced to 15 years in prison for violation of the National Stolen Property Act. Her young confederate, Peggy Garvey, was given a five-year sentence and then placed on probation. And thus, your FBI ended the careers of three greedy swindlers. The clue which led the two special agents to the apartment in Hollywood came from the International School of Dramatic Art. Special Agent Taylor reasoned that since the young blonde had gone to the trouble of notifying the school of her previous changes of address, she might do the same thing again. Within a week, the school received the change of address and notified the local FBI field office, which relayed the information. And so, once again, it was not a brilliant stroke of inspiration which closed a file successfully for your FBI, because those inspirations come far apart, and the reputation of the Federal Bureau of Investigation is too solid to have been based on hunches. It was hard work which closed this case, hard work in searching diligently and then following every clue to the logical conclusion, a conclusion which ultimately led to the stamping of a word across this particular file, the single important word, convicted. <laughs> In just a moment, we will tell you about next week's case from the files of your FBI. Friends, if you were impressed a few minutes ago by what I told you about the Equitable Society's Assured Home Ownership Plan, if the idea appeals to you of a low-interest rate first mortgage combined with life insurance to protect your home against death and hard times, then I suggest that you get in touch with your Equitable representative. He'll show you exactly what this plan will do for you personally, how much money it can save you, how much added security it will give you. So contact your Equitable Society representative without delay or write care of this station to the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. Next week, we will dramatize another case from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, an unusual story revealing the cunning tactics of an elusive murderer. Its subject, extortion. Its title, Student of Violence. The incidents used in tonight's Equitable Life Assurance Society's broadcast are adapted from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. However, all names used are fictitious, and any similarity thereof to the names of persons living or dead is accidental. Tonight, the music was composed and conducted by Frederick Steiner. The author was Jerry Lewis. Your narrator was William Woodson, and Special Agent Taylor was played by Stacey Harris. This is Your FBI is a Jerry Devine production. 
This is Larry Keating speaking for the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community. And inviting you to tune in again next week at this same time when the Equitable Life Assurance Society will bring you another thrilling story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Student of Violence on This Is Your FBI. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.